It feels like I've started off the last five plus episodes of this series with this very line, but is this it for the Los Angeles Kings? A 58 win regular season sets the stage for another postseason run where we look to see if we can win a cup in, again, what is potentially going to be, what is more than likely going to be our final season. In terms of roster editing, I'm down to just a few hours left. There's a little bit of a test run process uh, that has to happen, of course. That'll be done on Twitch. I might export it over to YouTube once that's done. But point being, you know, we went into this season with the expectation that this was it. In theory, there could be one more season. Time will tell. And this roster lived up to the hype. The top six carried the weight. I mean, you look at Kapari and Van Kadishen stepping up. Manny Avani, the addition you know, through the draft in the last season. But then, of course, you finally get Albrecht, Pau, Curry, and Vandenbush stepping up, making this lineup, and doing very well in the process. Defensively, Mauricio Drury you know, making it to the NHL level and doing wonders. I mean, he was fantastic this season as was Mercier, which we needed those two to both be good in the aftermath of losing Kale Clegg. And then goaltending-wise, we talked about whether or not it was the right call to bring back Yuri Gleboff. After three seasons away in Ottawa, I think uh, we made the right choice, and he was well worth the cost. Although the time will, uh, time will ultimately tell whether or not he can get it done in the postseason. He had one playoff run with Ottawa, 17 games, 11 Four and two, but didn't do that well. They were winning in spite of his performances. And again, we know for us, it all you know, it all comes down to this. I mean, this team is absolutely set up for success. And we're going to take a look here first and foremost at the overalls. But the problem is that St. Louis has a 100 overall offense, and they're not going to be pushovers. We have the defensive edge. And the goaltending edge, I'm very intrigued to see what their goaltending tandem looks like. I was going to say the main problem here, not just the offense, but of course the playoffs are an entirely different animal. We can do as well as we want to do, but then we get to this point, and here we are. Anything can happen. This is the Blues team that we are up against, and it's an interesting one. We have Atu Roddy there as well we're not there as well but leading things off for us i was going to say christian vessel line in there as well but i was looking at the fourth line it's this is a, this is a ridiculous team <laughs> atu Roddy is alongside robert thomas and alex fortin so i mean yeah that's tough to deal with fortin up to an 87 for god's sakes anthony bovillier with cody glass and vladimir tarasenko oscar limblom with pascal leberge and yannick wokanen so a decent philly connection there on the third line and christian vessel line and dylan holloway and elias combs as a fourth line is dumb combs was the number one overall pick in last year's draft he's on their fourth line with holloway and vessel line and that team is insane so that 100-rated offense isn't surprising. And defensively, it's competent. Scott Perunovic and Alvin Oliver, first-round pick in 2020. Erho Vakanainen next to Alex Alexiev. And Nick Haig next to Joey Lidecker, a fourth overall pick two years ago. The goaltender is Peter Kochkov. So uh, Jonathan Klaassen really drags down that rating. They have an 83 overall starter. I mean, this is tough. Alex Formanton, Tyler Simpson, Frederick Allard as the uh, as the main options there. Damn. I mean, you had a feeling, right? At least I did heading into this episode that the St. Louis team, they weren't going to be pushovers. They are very, very, very much not pushovers. <laughs> that is extremely problematic my god <sighs> all right is this it time will tell game one let's kick things off here and hopefully on a strong note it would be devastating to have this team lose here if you want one more season to happen in this series i mean the odds of it happening certainly go up if we were to just get steamrolled by st louis here in the first round <laughs> 
First period, not a great start and in the immediate aftermath of me saying that. Rick Van Kattishen gets the opening goal. Perunovic ties it up on the power play. Leidecker gets it one back. So we outshot them, but we're down 2-1. to one. Second period, it gets worse. Two goals for Oscar Lindblom, one for Vladimir Tarasenko, and the concerns over Yuri Gleboff in the postseason, very much valid. As Savoy scores on the power play, it's now down to three. My God, Roddy scores on Kalanos. Whew. Okay. Okay. Still got a long way to go. Quoken scores. Still have a long way to go in this series. But this was worst case scenario in terms of how this started off. 7-2 to two is your final score. We put up 50 shots. 53 shots. 51 saves for the 83 overall Russian. I mean, you want to talk about how ridiculous it is that, you know, a middle-of-the-road goalie is able to steal a game like that. There you go. Wow. Minus threes for Turcott, Dunn, Bjorn fought. And both goaltenders were just absolutely abysmal. That is not, not the start I wanted. Carl Grundstrom goes down to a mild concussion. I don't think there's such a thing as a mild concussion. I would say a concussion is a mild concussion. You can have a severe concussion, though. Oh, boy. Brett Senny. Brett Senny is going to be in this lineup, I think. It's just a matter of where. I think I want to keep that second line together. The third line, of course, there are some minuses. Senny's not a great fit for the third line, but he is a good fit for the fourth line. Which means, say I want to bump up Manny Avani. Who makes sense out of this third line to bump up to the top line? And the answer... There's really nobody. The best fit is Shannon Vandenbush. Fair play. That makes that decision fairly easy. We're going to give Shannon Vandenbush a good opportunity there. Now, he's a grinder on the top line, but hey, we'll see what happens. But Brett Senny gets an opportunity here in Game 2, and I'm already shitting bricks because, yeah, we just lost Game 1 in convincing fashion, we lose Carl Grundstrom for the next two games, one of the key players on this team for the past couple of seasons' worth of success. This really was the worst-case scenario to start this off. First period, Van Kattishen starts the scoring again. Oliver and Quokinen, I guess I should be thankful that Matthew Savoy was able to score and get it back to a two-all game, or back to a tied game at two apiece. I am not impressed with Gleboff right now. Second period... Bjorn fought, Vandenbush scores, which is great validation for me. Anthony Bovillier gets them back to within one. It's four to three. Heading into the third period here of game two, a Pascal LeBarge ties it, and Kaliboff, oh Kaliboff, no. <laughs> we might have to look at starting Kalanos in game three. We are trailing five to four. A power play chance goes to waste. And that could be the death knell. Two minutes to play. The St. Louis Blues take both games on the road to start this series. And we are in a ridiculous amount of trouble. Obviously, you know, there's a certain factor here. Like, the penalty kill needs to be better. But, I mean, come on. Yuri Gleboff. It's a Jekyll and Hyde situation here. Regular season, there were moments where it's like, oh yeah, vindication, validation. And now we look here, and this, this is a nightmare. Two straight losses to the Blues. Who right now, they have 33%. They've only had three power plays. It's not even the, uh, it's not even the discipline. Can't even blame the discipline here. It's just Gleboff hasn't been able to hasn't been able to get it done. 109 points for Savoy as well as well in the regular season. We head to St. Louis and we need to hope that it's the home team losing trend 
rearing its ugly head here. If it's not, we're in a boatload of trouble. That second line really needs to stay together. But the problem is the top line's been abysmal. Absolutely abysmal. What I want to do here, we have Abramov, we have Nash, we have Fogamo. I know what I want to do here. We are, uh, we're calling in the secret weapon. We are calling in the secret weapon. His name is Cole Caulfield. And he will be on the top line heading into game three as insane as that sounds. But Vandenbush will be back down to the fourth line. And we're going to be taking Senny out for Caulfield. And we're going to hope for the best. He's a tremendous fit for that top line at least, which is nice. Right-handed shot. I mean, I guess you could make an argument for who else should be there. Third line of Vani, Anderson, Dolan, and Albrecht, obviously, who I named first. They've been rough, too. This team just needs to get it together. I mean, simply put, they're not getting it done. And a lot of that comes down to Gleboff. Dunn and Bjornfod have been ripped apart. Absolutely ripped apart. And uh, we're going to swap Dunn for Anisimov. Mercier hasn't been that bad. I don't really know what else we can look to do here. Fourth line, Pau, Curry, Vandenbush. I mean, I can't scratch them. There isn't a single player in this lineup other than Michael Albrecht that I can actively take out of the lineup. But you know what? I might. I think I'm going to put in Senny just to get a different look on that third line. All right. <laughs> we're, we're screwed, aren't we? Yuri Gleboff. I, I, like, what do I do? What do I do here? I mean, I, I gotta run with him. We just have to hope he turns it around. This has been absolutely horrific, though. Game three. It's either the home team losing trend is a thing... Or, uh, I said the word sweep earlier, and that could become a reality. First period, 2-1 St. Louis. Mercier scores his first ever postseason goal, but a power play goal from Fortan. They're now 2-4 for four on the power play. Holloway, yeah, well, potentially they might have had more. Holloway makes it 2-1. Not good. Second period. <sighs> this is going to be one of the worst examples of a team collapsing in the first round that I've ever seen. Manny Avani scores, but it's 4-2. to This is going to be one of the worst examples of a team collapsing in the history of this channel. Matthew Savoy gets it back to a one-goal game, but is it too little too late is the question, and it appears as though that might be the case. Over 40 shots for us. Cole Caulfield ties it. Tremendous goal for him. Are we going to overtime? No, we're not. Scott Perunovic wins it with two seconds to go. The St. Louis Blues have a 3 to nothing series lead because Yuri Gleboff cannot stop a... I don't even want to look at the stats. Yuri Gleboff cannot stop a goddamn beach ball. 7-2-5-4-5-4. Scott Perunovic wins it at the death. And we are one win away... One St. Louis went away. One loss away for us. From the absolute worst case scenario we possibly could have had. Carl Grundstrom is back in the lineup. Brett Senny is very much out of the lineup. We're going to play Cole Caulfield. Just going to leave him. I can't even leave him as a sniper. we got to change him over to a two-way. Unfortunately. It's going to take some editing time for a move that probably isn't going to pay off. Vince Dunn has been abysmal against his former team. Jury hasn't been much better. I mean, pretty much everything that... I mean, if it can go wrong, it will go wrong, right? And that's... That's how this has gone down. I, I gotta start Kalanos. I have to start Kalanos. I mean, there's the argument of, uh, you know... 
I guess how deep down the rabbit hole the rules you want to go as to whether or not I should be able to scratch him. But I mean, come on. Corey Crawford was, you know, forced to take a seat at times, so screw it. I mean, at this point, too, who cares? I think we are we are well resigned to our fate being what it uh, appears to be. I don't see any way out of this. This team just certainly doesn't uh, doesn't look to care. Get to the playoffs, you know, kind of a up and down road to the final two months of the season, and now we get here, and we are absolutely just dead in the water here. I mean, we're screwed. We're having to rely on Kalanos to dig us out of this mess. And that's not exactly a situation that I wanted to be in, but here we are. Hmm. Alright, let's just double check what the line chemistry is for that third line. And uh, then we'll make the best of it. See if we can avoid the sweep, one game at a time. Third line's fine now, let's do it. Here we go. Here we go. Game four. Brandon Kalanos gets the start out of necessity. First period. Two goals apiece. Fortan and Roddy. Genther and Marsh, of all people. Of course, we did see uh, Avani's first goal in the last game, too, but it was overshadowed. Second period. We're done. We could not buy a save in this series. It's as if we had a 70 rated offense to their 100 based on how their offense is scoring compared to the goaltending. If this is it for the Los Angeles Kings to go out on a whimper like that, it is one of the most disappointing ways to have ever ended a series if not the most disappointing way to have ended a series in the history of this channel. It really, it really, really is. And Yuri Gleboff wants out, so the one-year experiment looks like it's done. We'd have to figure out the goaltending concerns, Van Kattishan, and just... The problem is, I don't know if this team deserves any more of a spotlight on them. In case this is it, let me know down in the comments who you'd suggest as a channel Hall of Famer. Although needless to say, some legacies have been tarnished in the aftermath of how this season, potentially this series, has come to a close.